introduction. I'm here under false pretenses. This is a uh, CEO forum, and I'm not one of those. I'm a, just a mid-level manager. Um, my presentation is about uh, the wool industry uh, per se, but I'm going to talk about sheep and wool. I'm going to cover them both and um, uh, do it within 10. So if, I, if we just start, um, I'm going to take you back, provide you a bit of context. This slide shows you, and it's in US dollars, okay, US billions. Um, both the wool industry has always been heavily trade exposed. Uh, about 98% of what we produce, we export. The, the red meat industry, particularly the sheep meat industry, is becoming very heavily trade exposed as well. Um, if you look at the gross value of production, and it starts in 91, 92, at the end of the reserve price scheme. In Queensland at the time, there were about 17 million sheep. Okay, and you were producing about 9% of the national clip. It goes through to uh, the forecast for this year. A couple of things I want to point out. The blue is wool, in terms of wool's contribution to the national economy. The red is the sheep meat sector. You'll notice uh, two things. that our Overall, we've doubled the GVP in 23 years. So the contribution of this industry to the national economy has doubled in, in 23 years. Largely, it's been driven by the growth in the red meat part of the sheep industry. And essentially, the, what's happened is we've added, uh, in effect, a, a strong uh, and competitive export market onto what was a uh, strong domestic market. It's a great story, extraordinary story. So you've got a lot of that's been driven by what you might call the progressive emergence of affluence to the north of us, which Richard talked about. And uh, there'll be a lot of talk about supply chains today. And as I said, the sheep meat industry act, adding, in effect, an export business. But through the, one of the things you need to realise is that, and the, this blue line shows you the numbers of sheep that we start each year with. We've gone from 160 million in 91, 92, down to about 70 million now. So we've, in effect, doubled the US dollar GVP for our national flock from less than half the sheep. It's um, uh, No, that's, this is nominal. Okay, but it's, um, you can de-inflate it and it will, um, it will uh, still look pretty awesome. Now, what you've heard today, and I'll, we'll talk a little bit about the projections, is that um, this also reflects the tightness of supply, in, a, in effect. That's what's driving up uh, those GVP figures as well, as Richard spoke to. But longer term, um, back when I was a, a, stu a student at uni, there were about six people on the planet for every sheep. Uh, there's about seven now. And in, uh, by 2050, there'll be about nine humans on the planet for every sheep. So one of the things that's um, affecting us is in, it, in essence that we are an increasingly rare premium product, uh, and to the north of us is an increasingly affluent market on our doorstep. That will underpin, um, aside from the year-to-year -year fluctuations in FX rate, drought effects that we just we heard about, and those sorts of things, the underpinning drivers are to do with emerging affluence and population growth. This, this is where I, I thought uh, the presentation, I think it was from Ben this morning, uh, was very, very interesting, particularly in terms of your borrowing capacity per productive unit. Um, I've just divided here the GVP by the number of sheep we start the season with. Okay, so this is in effect the earnings per share. If you think of a, uh, a dry sheep or a female sheep as a share, pro a share that you're buying on the market. Let's, uh, I've just highlighted the stockpile era. Um, many of you here, when I look around, will remember with fondness uh, when we had the stockpile. Um, it smashed the price of wool, and um, to your point, uh, when we were looking at drought in the 90s, people were shooting sheep, uh, because if you remember that, that, that I certainly remember it, because uh, they weren't worth yarding. What's happened since then is the, the unit, or the gross production value per season opening uh, number for sheep has gone up by about 8%. Oh, for, for, for wool, should I say, for meat about 9%, and the combination's about 8 or 9%. Um, per annum. It's, it's, a, it's a bloody good thing. Again, it's driven uh, by tightness of supply, both uh, and also the rising demand. What does the future hold? 
and how do we keep driving this forward? Well, the future holds tightness of supply. Um, there's a natural cap on our ability to grow both the flock and the herd. It's because we like eating them and other people like eating them. You heard Richard talk about, the, I think, more than 50% of the yardings or the slaughterings for cows, or are for cows, the females. That's going to prevent the rebuilding. For the, for the coming years, and particularly for people in, let's say, a, a drought-affected state, um, who are, have downsized, who are holding on to their most valuable stock, the productivity per head is actually becoming far more important. We've talked a lot about productivity per hectare for the last 20 years. And we all, we all get that concept. One of the things that's uh, staring certainly Queensland in the face, in drought recovery, the issue of, of making sure that you get rid of the wastage from every single female that you have. It's absolutely critical. Uh, some of you will know of Home Sackett. Um, they're probably a bit southern for this audience, but they're a major benchmarking company. These are the trends in wool and sheep meat income per DSE, uh, per dry sheep equivalent, uh, for wool specialists. Pretty parallel uh, trends, very positive. Again, if you think of it like a share price analogy, the, each share is earning you, um, over time, a, a, a better income. And it's no wonder that uh, the cost of a young ewe lamb, if you want to buy an, a, a ewe lamb, you can easily spend well over 100 bucks now. Okay. That's likely to continue to rise, particularly if the earnings per share rise. And if you think about your borrowing capacity, which Ben spoke to, or the value or the risk capital you can invest per share, that's, that's an important concept. Okay. The other thing that will happen, and it's really happening in our industry, is greater appreciation for cash flow resilience. Uh, the, the climate risk variation is actually smashing cropping industries, and you only have to uh, look at what's happening in Victoria this, this year, certainly big parts in New South Wales too. Um, the, un the, the, the risk that's affecting the croppers is huge. Okay, I want to talk about now, just I want to finish with two ideas, uh, which I think, or technologies, two developments uh, that will be particularly important over the coming years, particularly in a flock which is trying to rebuild or a herd that's trying to rebuild, and where the, the share price to buy a productive unit is high. Firstly, uh, the first area is technology infusion. Um, the wool industry, uh, or the sheep industry and the beef industry, um, suffer by comparison when you look at what the croppers and young recruits to the cropping industry have at their disposal in terms of smart technology and um, computer controlled tractors and GPS this and apps and so on. So this is a huge opportunity for us. I'll just flag a couple of things because the cha technology is changing very fast. That top uh, tag is a GPS tracking tag. They're pretty common. I just want to point, that's a size of about two or three 20 cent pieces stacked on top of each other and it's solar powered. So the, the amazing thing we, we like about that is the size of the solar panel. So in terms of one of the big problems, particularly up here, is the distances that signals have to traverse. Um, it's, it hammers smart technology, particularly in ruminant species. Well, there's potentially there's some breakthroughs coming um, in the power and power conservation space. The middle tag's Taggle, it's pretty well established, that's proximity relative to a base station. Bloody good for theft, so if you're a Pitt Street farmer or a, uh, a big city cat in uh, Brisbane and alarm could go off because your cattle are straying outside a, a, a fence, that's half the value proposition for those tags. The bottom one's the, we call sensor bug, we use that in our sleep studies, looking at uh, temperature and humidity management. That can talk to other tags. Um, doing proximity and we're doing some work right at the moment on proximity based parentage using tags not DNA. Um, so there's a lot of potentials here. We've funded uh, work in, including in Queensland. We, we invest uh, quite a bit of money both in people and in um, groups in Queensland in dog control. These sorts of technologies potentially have an application there as well and also in biosecurity, which is also a key part of our future and supply chain integrity. Let's not forget drones and that ability to use these intelligently, not only for monitoring water um, in places where there's a fair bit of timber, 
but also for um, um, other applications. Final bit of blue sky for you is gender manipulation. And I'm sorry Kate is no longer here because uh, gender manipulation sounds like the Chinese swim team or actually the Russian swim team at the moment. <laughs> but, um, what you might be interested in is some emerging science which is uh, extremely exciting. Charles Sturt University and New South Wales DPI have been just quietly exploring for about five years some technology that came out of a very smart PhD student's work. Um, she noticed in, in uh, rats and mice that if you change the balance of fatty acids in their diet, they were getting these weird balances of uh, male and female mice and rats being born. Well, they've now proven this technology in repeated experiments. It doesn't decrease the overall conception rate, but what it does do, it allow them to bias the levers towards males or females if they want. And it's essentially cotton seed meals and oat meals versus silage, greens. Greens push it towards males and the, um, the oat seed meals, etc., push it towards the females. I think for this technology will be particularly suited for those people who are trying to recover from drought and who are faced with an enormous capital investment to restock. And they're down to their most valuable genetic units. That ability to bias it towards a high proportion of females when you're probably already confinement feeding them is probably not a bad idea. So something to watch out for as a technology that's, um, and something that actually can be trialled now. So look, just to summarise, there's a really quite positive outlook for wool and you know for sheep meat and for beef. Um, we just need to add some rain. Thank you. <laughs>